Hi, in this short video, we're going to consider what is hypnosis and how does it create powerful personal change, especially when we know that change can be so incredibly difficult sometimes. Now, although we use the words mind and brain interchangeably, they are definitely separate but overlapping or similar concepts. The brain is an amazing physical organ, but the mind is not. The brain is the place where the mind resides. And the brain is truly amazing. It is estimated that it has 86 billion cells, which create over 100,000 chemical reactions every single second. And at this point, it's also estimated that the brain storage capacity is almost unlimited. Now, the mind is that part of us that reasons, it thinks, it feels, it exerts will, it perceives, it judges. It creates approximately 50,000 thoughts per day. And again, it's also felt that good majority of those thoughts are negative, unfortunately. Now, the conscious mind is that part of the mind that is analytical and rigorous. The conscious mind is the part that we're most familiar with because it's always in our awareness. It's the way we think. It's highly, highly analytical, but it can only handle in limited small number of things at any given time and is easily overwhelmed. Now, it is very strong with analysis. It's highly logical. It uses reason and judgment. It's a decision maker. It's where we keep our short term memory. And it's also the seat of our willpower. Now, the subconscious mind is more about feelings and emotions. It comes largely programmed from birth, or at least certain aspects of it, and is greatly influenced and developed through our life experience. It is programmed for our protection and survival, and will seek to push us towards comfort and away from pain or discomfort. And it works very hard to keep us behaving in accordance with our self-image or the person we believe ourselves to be. Now, this is the seat of our feelings. It's where our emotion comes from. It's also the place where we have our long-term memories. The subconscious mind has an incredible capacity for handling information and data. It's where we use our imagination. It loves imagination. It loves rhythm, beat, music, creativity. It's where we tend to put our skills, our repetitive behaviors and habits. And it's also greatly shaped and influence around our values and beliefs. The vast majority of the time, both parts of our mind work together incredibly well like a well-oiled machine. And if we look at a simple example of how they work together, if you consider this lady, she's just gotten up off her seat, which was a, a rational, conscious decision that took her a fraction of a second, but to get her up, walking across the floor, reach out, grasp that handle, turn it, and open the door is an incredible feat of balance, coordination, timing that she didn't have to think about consciously it it was controlled from her subconscious so why is it that change is so difficult especially when it comes to changing habits or lifestyle unfortunately most times when we want to make change in our life we go to willpower we try to consciously make changes, but there's a problem. 
willpower is notoriously short-lived. In the American Psychological Association's annual survey on stress, people regularly cite lack of willpower as the number one barrier to making changes that could improve their lives. Now, willpower, unfortunately, is a limited resource. Study after study shows we use up our willpower reserves as we use them, and we're constantly using willpower. Apart from a few lucky individuals with iron willpower, it rarely works, especially for long-term change. And the greatest mind of the 20th century, Albert Einstein, he also pointed out that whenever there is a conflict between the rational conscious mind and the creative subconscious, the subconscious always wins. So if you think about it, where there is a conflict or where the conscious and subconscious don't work together, on the one side you've got analysis, logic, reason, judgment, decision-making, short-term memory and willpower against feeling, emotion, long-term memory, creative imagination, our skills, habits, beliefs and values. So if we think about that in, in, in the context of a lifestyle change, such as trying to lose some weight or get healthy as an example, you know, on the conscious side, you know, it makes sense to lose some weight. Perhaps it's good for your health, improves fitness, increases energy vitality, you look better, uh, increases self-confidence. And for a lot of people, they once again enjoy shopping. They look good. They enjoy going out and socializing. All sounds highly desirable. But against that, you've got, you know, emotional eating or comfort eating. You've got poor health habits. You've got a negative self-image, which lacks confidence, lack of self-belief. And this all comes together to stifle motivation. Leads to confusion. Change is difficult in this situation. So there is another issue. Another issue, unfortunately, change can sometimes be difficult because of what we call the critical factor in our conscious minds. Critical factor can be sort of imagined as a, a psychological gatekeeper between the conscious and subconscious minds. The critical factor filters all new ideas, new information, and anything that might lead to change before it gets to the subconscious. It constantly monitors everything from our senses, and it tends to reject that that does not agree with any pre-existing ideas or beliefs. It craves stability. So anything that doesn't fit in with our already established worldview gets thrown away. The critical factor is very cautious. It's protective. It, it judges. It craves homeostasis or balance. In other words, it can't allow one belief or thought to conflict with another in our minds. It's very powerful, and it decides to accept or reject new information. This is a very important function. It really is. However, when it makes decisions based on in inaccurate, false, or even misleading information or beliefs, it greatly limits our options. So what's the secret? How can we make changes? Successful lifestyle change requires two things, a conscious rational decision and change at a subconscious level that allows us to change already established habits and behaviors. In my estimation, making a, a rational decision is relatively easy. Again, let's think of our example. So we're thinking about this change in lifestyle, trying to lose some weight. Rationally, it's good for your health, improves fitness, leads to greater energy, you look better, you feel better. A no-brainer in some ways. But how do you do the, the, the change at a deeper subconscious level? And that's the one. 
you know, how do we deal with the emotional eating, the bad habits, the negative self-image, that lack of confidence or self-belief? How do we increase our motivation? How do we avoid that confusion? Hypnosis is the answer. Or at least it's one answer, and a very powerful one at that. What is it? What is hypnosis? Well, here's a, a rather complicated definition, so we'll take our time. It's a state of physical and mental relaxation, combined with the narrowing or a focusing of one's attention, and this allows us to bypass that critical function of the conscious mind. So it, it sort of allows us to get into that deeper creative subconscious. And in addition, it leads to an acceptance of good ideas and suggestions, beneficial ideas and suggestions. It's incredibly relaxing. It's a very personal experience, but it does feel wonderful. Now, it can be used simply to relax deeply, similar in some ways to meditation. Or it can be goal-directed, where ideas and suggestion is used to create positive change in our thinking, our feelings and emotions, and also our behavior. Hypnosis is very commonplace, and it can occur in at least three different ways. Let me explain. Have you ever been lost in a good book? Lost to the extent that you're actually almost in the book, in the story. Unaware of your or surroundings, perhaps. You're in that little trancy, daydreamy place. That's a little like hypnosis. Maybe lost in a good film, where you're almost in the action. Or, for me, it's when I'm driving. I am so comfortable, I'm wrapped up in my own thoughts, perhaps. On so many occasions, I've been going to a, a well-known destination and I've missed my turn. It's what we call highway hypnosis. And, and the best hypnotists in the world are the retailers, the marketeers, the advertisers. They know how to bypass that critical judgment to allow their sales pitches to get through. You've got what we call heterohypnosis, which is simply hypnosis which is facilitated by someone or something outside of ourselves. So in this case, it's a, a hypnotherapist. Or perhaps listening to um, hypnotherapy recordings. Or you can do self-hypnosis. Incredibly simple, very, very pleasant, and a great vehicle for change. Thanks for listening. Check out more about hypnosis and hypnotherapy and how it can help you.